church and the community should be there to meet the needs of the community. Not only did Reverend Castle have a vision, but he had the determination to act on God's ordained vision. Through his foresight, faith in God, and spiritual inspiration, Friendship West Baptist Church became a reality. On the second Sunday in June of 1976, a total of nine worshipers had the inaugural worship service at the Mary Louis Sweat School of Dance on Liberty Lane. It's a crazy story that blows my mind. Every time I think about how Frederick Haynes and Friendship West came together, 1975, the year before the birth of Friendship West, my dad asked me, as I was graduating from my middle school, junior high school, we called it then, would I join him in a road trip from San Francisco to Dallas? That meant I had to miss the trip to Disneyland with my class, graduation, all that stuff, but it was with my dad. And so I took the road trip with him. And we drove from San Francisco, or he drove from San Francisco to Dallas with a stop on the way uh, from my sister's graduation and in Southern California. And so we got to Dallas. We get to Dallas and Reverend Robert L. Castle, who went to school with my dad, evidently at Bishop College, he wants to take us out to eat. And so we go out to eat and I'm 14 years old, not really paying attention, but I recall him talking about uh, I'm going to start my own church. And that really tripped me out like, you know, how do you start your own church? I am a member of Third Baptist, which is, you know, in excess of 100 years old. So I'm tripping. Why are you starting a church? I, I don't know anything about that, but I remember in that conversation between Reverend Castle and my dad that he's, you know, talking about starting a church, his vision and all that stuff. And as a 14-year-old, I'm like, I don't see how that's going to happen. The next time I see Reverend Castle is three months later when my dad passes and he and his wife come to the funeral. And, you know, I remember him greeting me. We joined the first year, 1976. Oh, my sister passed that little A-frame church on Polk and told us I saw black people coming out of that building. So we were amazed, and that week, our founding pastor, Reverend Robert L. Castle, knocked on my door, inviting us to church. I said, oh no, I have a small child, not yet two years old, and he's not adjusted, so we don't go to church anymore. He said, that's okay, that's what my church is, mostly just children. If he talks too much, we'll tell him to shut up. <laughs> if he moves around, we'll tell him to sit down. I said, if you're sure that's okay, we'll be there. And the next Sunday we went and joined. So, of course, three years later I'm at Bishop College and start preaching a year after that. And interestingly, one of the things that, again, blows my mind in the backstory is that I was scheduled to preach for an MLK service in Beaumont, Texas. Uh, in January of uh, 81, 81, yeah, it had to be 81. And so I go to uh, preach, but I have to drive because, you know, they told me, you know, get there the best way you can, we'll reimburse you. I said, cool, so I ended up driving, borrowing a car from a frat brother, get to Beaumont, and only, that's when I discovered that I'm there on the wrong Sunday. Uh, I didn't have an assistant, so I'm thinking I was supposed to be there the fourth Sunday in January. It's the third Sunday in January. And so the pastor's wife, because the pastor's out of town, I call her 
and ask, you know, I tell her I'm here, and she says, well, you're supposed to be here last Sunday. What happened? And so uh, she said, well, just come over, and you can stay the night and then get back on the road in the morning. I had no money. I'd run out of gas, and this was not good. So I go over her house, stay the night. While I'm asleep, she calls her husband, who's preaching out of town. He calls a friend, and his friend says, man, I need a preacher tomorrow because uh, my, my, my guest is sick and he can't preach. What can I do? He says, oh man, this is good. Uh, young Freddie Haynes from Dallas, Bishop College student is in town. This is the largest black church in Beaumont. So I ended up preaching there. And when I preached there, uh, unbeknownst to me, Reverend Castle had pastored in Beaumont. Matter of fact, he pastored the church pastored now by uh, my good friend John Adolf. And uh, when I preach for Adolf, I look and there's Pastor Castle's picture on the wall. So, so there's a whole lot of backstory going on. And so I, I preach there that Sunday and they are very kind to me. They get me back to Dallas, give me enough money basically to cover my books and most of my remaining tuition. And, but unbeknownst to me, this is one of the best friends of Pastor Castle. He calls Pastor Castle, tells Pastor Castle about me. Pastor Castle says, I know him. His dad and I were good friends. Where is he? He says he's at Bishop College. Monday, I'm on my way to class. The phone rings. It's a pay phone uh, in the hallway. I walk by it. The dorm mother says, I know you hear the phone ringing. And so I said, but I got to get to class. You hear the phone ringing. So I answer the phone, and on the other end, somebody says, may I please speak to Frederick Haynes? I said, who is this? And he says, my name is Robert L. Castle, and uh, I knew your dad, and uh, I pastor here in Dallas, Friendship West. My best friend told me you preached yesterday in Beaumont, and I gotta have you at Friendship West. And uh, so I said, where's that? And so he tells me it's on Polk Street, and that is the beginning because about the, that summer was when I was able to preach, July. I preached for him in the summer and uh, at the A-frame on Polk Street. And I never will forget it because it was, for me, a very humbling experience. I felt like I flunked. Uh, and then after church, uh, no one really spoke to me, and I'm like, this was not good. And so he takes me back to school, tells me he'll pick me up the next day uh, to give me my honorarium. So I said, okay, cool. He picks me up, and he says, man, the people love you. You got to come back. I said, no, I didn't feel the love. And I didn't say that out loud, but I said that to myself. He said, can you come next month? And so I said, no, Doc, uh, I'm booked. I was lying but I was going back to uh, San Francisco to go home for a month. And then he said, well, can you come in September? I said, no, doc, I'm booked. I'm really lying now, because I ain't booked. He said, okay, October. I said, I'm booked in October, I gotta do this. And he said, all right, first Sunday, February, 1982. I need you to preach for me. I know you ain't booked that Sunday because that's communion Sunday and ain't nobody having you preach that Sunday. So I said, I said Okay, I'll be there. I became a member because of uh, several events that took place. First of all, I had moved to the neighborhood, and after moving to the neighborhood, we realized that we needed a church home. So my wife and I, and our children, Maurice and Sheila, we needed them to have a place to study and study the Word of God and, and be, feel comfortable. So uh, we had been visiting different churches and then uh, we uh, saw this church at 7505 South Polk Street and we decided to go in and we met the pastor and everything and he was real friendly and it just seemed like that was the place for us to be. So that was uh, Reverend Robert L. Castle III. So he just became, we became a member because of, basically because of him and his love that he showed toward us. So the first Sunday in February, 1982, I came back to Friendship West to preach. And um, unbeknownst to all of us, Reverend Castle had walking pneumonia, and he passed that week.
On February 25th, 1982, Friendship West would face his first major trial with the untimely death of the founding pastor, Reverend Castle. Before he passed on, he, we used to have chats, we used to have conversations after Bible study. And one of the things he said to me was that, he said, you know, one of these days I'm gonna go out to, Paul, uh, out to Bishop College and uh, get one of them preachers out there, and bring him over here and uh, let him preach for us and then I'm gonna go on home and be with the Lord. And it's amazing how that happened because uh, Pastor Haynes' father knew Pastor Castle and because they knew each other, you know, he just went out to Bishop College and was re researching different people. And by him being an alumni of Bishop College, you know, he just felt like that's what he needed to do. On February the 13th, 1983, Reverend Haynes assumed pastoral leadership at Friendship West and was officially installed as pastor on April the 10th, 1983. So I get a call from Deacon Wilson who was chair of deacons at the time, and he said, you know, our pastor just passed, and we need a preacher for Sunday. Would you mind preaching? And so I said, okay. And so that Sunday I preached. Felt really bad. Uh, and after church, they asked me to serve as interim pastor. And I came to French Hill West. My husband had been a deacon for years here at this church, one of the first deacons with Deacon Mouse and Deacon Thomas. I was at another church, uh, St. Philip Missionary Baptist Church, where I was engaged in a lot of activities. So it took me quite a few years to make my mind up about coming here. And I kept hearing so much about Dr. Frederick Hain, the young man who came to this church at the age of 21 from Bishop College. I said, what's going on over there? My husband said, you got to hear. And so I've counted it all joy. So that's the beginning of, you know, the relationship with, you know, Freddie Haynes and Friendship West. It was just a trip. Let me, let me say this right quick because I got to know Pastor Castle, which I had no idea. 1975, he's talking about organizing a church that I'm gonna end up preaching for and pastoring, you know, God is something. And then on top of that, uh, that July of 81, when I preached for him, he picked me up Monday, took me to lunch, gave me my honorarium and stuff. But we had a long talk about what he wanted to do with Friendship West. And I hate to say it, but I'm in church, so I can't lie. Um, I was so uninterested. Uh, number one, because I had had a bad experience preaching wise to me. And he's telling me about how the church loves me. And I'm like, no. And then he starts telling me about, well, this is what I'm gonna do. We got eight acres of land. We're gonna build out here. He's talking about being a church involved in the community. He says, you know, we were one of the first black churches in Oak Cliff uh, when black people started moving to Oak Cliff. Uh, he said there was Concord, Bailey starts Concord. Uh, Tony Evans started uh, Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship, and, and then there's Friendship West and Eastgate. He said, we were the four who really started things uh, here. And so uh, I'm like, okay, that's nice. And he said, and so, but I, he said, but I got a vision of acreage. That's why I got these eight acres. And we're gonna, you know, do this and do this and do this. And he had these big plans and that, intrigued me because I had preached in this small A-frame church, but this brother has big plans. And uh, so I never will forget that. And he talked about the educators in the church. And so he said, we've got to have a vision for educating our kids. And because uh, we had so many teachers and principals and educators who were members of the church. So um, I look back on that time and A, I can't help but reflect on the fact that, you know, I got to overhear in a conversation with Reverend Castle and my dad, this man is gonna start this church. And I'm like, I ain't got nothing to do with me, but it had a lot to do with me. And then B, to go to a church on the wrong Sunday in Beaumont, but going to the wrong church evidently was the right thing in God's will that hooked me up with Reverend Castle. And then a church I thought didn't like me, you know, I'm the pastor. 
So that, that's, it, it's a trip, it's a God thing. You know, it's like, God is really something. God continued to show that his hand was on Friendship West as membership grew to over 300 because of rapid growth on June the 2nd, 1991, the Friendship West Church family moved by caravan from its original location at 7505 South Polk Street to the 616 West Keys Boulevard location. In June of uh, 1991, we made the move to Keast, and so it was a faith step. So I begin with the faith, but then our faith worked because I shared earlier that it was also a time where it was a bad neighborhood. And so we're in revival one night. Jeffrey Johnson is preaching, doing what Jeffrey Johnson does. And after church, across the street, there's a crime scene marked off by yellow tape. And uh, we find out that three young brothers have been shot in a bathtub, mafia-like hit. And I'm like, we, we, we can't just do this because we'd come out on Sundays to hear gunshots. And so we said, we've got to do something. So uh, that was the birth of Operation Transformation. And Corporal James Allen led a march of all black men dressed in all black uh, on a Saturday where we just walked through the neighborhood, silent march in black, came back to church where the sisters were waiting and then we dispersed in the, into the community to find out what the needs were. And we became the headquarters of the Neighborhood Association. We became, uh, we, we birthed, uh, and I, I gotta give you this, one night we, uh, uh, I told every representative who represented that area, uh, from our city council person, to our county commissioner, to our state rep, our uh, state senator, Meet me at 10 o'clock and we're gonna walk this area because I want you to see what we are up against and what we are dealing with, what the community is facing every night. And so we saw, of course, the drug trafficking, the prostitution, all of that, that our neighbors were living with every single day. And again, that birth operation transformation, it birthed the relationship we had with that community and it birthed for me what I've been trying to preach about on Polk Street, Keast made it happen and that is a ministry mindset. Almost every ministry we have right now was birthed on Keast. And so yet all these ministries that were designed to meet the need of the community and what was happening in the church. And our motto became, whatever problems exist in this community, we want a ministry designed to address it. And so ministries just, just came out of everywhere and we recognized our responsibility was to witness outside. Which so for, for me, the greatest compliment we had after we moved here uh, on Wheatland, January 1st, 2006, I go back to Keast uh, one day and somebody stops me and I said, no, they said, uh, man, we sure do miss you. I said, I bet you don't miss the traffic on Sundays. They said, yeah, we miss that too. Uh, because what came with the traffic was a church that cared about us. I'm asking you, don't forget us, even though y'all have moved. And that blessed me because they felt the impact of the ministry. And I'm thinking because we used to, you remember, I mean, parking on Sundays, especially for that 930 service, it was bananas. It was no room on Keys to get through there. And we got in trouble with the city a whole lot, uh, but ministry was taking place. And because ministry was taking place, I think God honored us. And so it was a faith that got us there, work that kept us there. And of course, you know, a bad thing that became, again, a reflection of the ministry of the church uh, was the whole Katrina piece uh, that is a huge memory for me. I never will forget the fact that when Katrina hit uh, August, I guess it's what, 05, uh, Katrina hits and you have all these persons who were displaced, labeled refugees uh, by the media, which was such, a, such an insult. Uh, but they come to Dallas and because of the ministry mindset, we opened up our doors 
and became a 24-7 operation uh, to the point where, you know, the city of Dallas looked to Friendship West for how to organize receiving our neighbors from Louisiana. And uh, we were the motto. No other church. Uh, we were the motto. We didn't have the facility of some of the other churches, but what we did, we set up a 24-7 operation to minister to persons from, uh, from who, were, who were hurt by, her, displaced by Hurricane Katrina. Uh, that's huge. I close with this, and that is on Keist, uh, I cannot even give a shout out about Keist without giving a shout out about the Bishop Five Revival, uh, because that uh, vision of um, uh, Willis Johnson, uh, who ironically yesterday he sent to the Bishop Five, he sent a picture of us because he said that it was 31 years ago that we started, uh, and I guess that's about right. And they chose Friendship West because we had no idea if it was going to be a success and we had that part the partition where we could say okay if people don't show up uh, we'll just partition off the area if they do show up we'll open up the partition to the overflow which was larger than the sanctuary and uh, they showed up like crazy to the point where that thing was you know it became the revival in town and uh, but it also put us on the map as a church. And so many people joined our church through that revival. Uh, even though there were other churches involved, they kind of stuck with Friendship West. And so um, there's a whole lot I can say about Keist, but uh, those are some of the highlights that you know really stand out. And we blew up. I guess you look at it too. Uh, I would say one of my most impacted. We always, uh, when we was on Keys, we, we uh, the deacons and also the men's and the entire church uh, helped with the community to improve their security, safety, whatever necessary uh, to impact that community. The pastor Hain always had a vision, had something going, and he had the support of the church and the entire membership. If it was a march or whatever it was, try to impact, we involved in it. And well, I was part of that too. It, it is so profound to think about the fact that the blowing up in terms of the, our growth, our numerical growth, uh, required, you know, making a move. We tried everything in our power to stay on Keist. We even had a nice design of if we could buy the uh, gas station and that motel that we could expand there. We thought about buying the bank across the street. Uh, everything fell apart. And then, you know, Deb, who's in commercial real estate, said, well, what about all this land across from Carter High School? And so that set the stage for us to begin that long, construction process. Uh, so to get to January 1st, 2006, you know, I come on that day to this space with the backdrop of, oh my God, us marching around the land, you know, before there was anything here to claim it and doing as it were what was done in Joshua. We literally walked this property believing it was going to be ours and ended up getting 60 acres and uh, the construction began with all of the headaches that go with construction uh, and it was funny because January 1st we made the move December 31st and I just this, this just hit me December 31st was a Saturday night watch night service we had watch night service in the old facility, and then we had our first service January 1st in the new facility. So watch night on Keist, first service January 1st uh, right here on Wheatland Road. And so all of that is just a lot. It's like I'm thinking 
We're right around the corner from Polk Street, literally right around the corner from the A-frame facility. And so my initial thought is, I, I went back to the Reverend Castle and the fact that Reverend Castle had these big plans for Friendship West to the point where he purchased eight acres. And I was glad to say, Reverend Castle, we got you 60 now. And so that was my first thought. Thank you, Reverend Castle, for having that big vision. And thank you, God, for letting me be a part of it. But then thank you, God, for doing exceedingly abundantly above all we all could ask or imagine. So uh, that was my initial feeling, thinking on that morning. Uh, and then it was real funny because the balcony was not completed. And we told the construction people, we're moving in here on January 1st. We've had enough delays, we're moving in January 1st. And so we just moved on in here, even though some of the pews were not you know, in place. And that was for me a very powerful, moving day uh, because again, I go back to 1975 and I go back to overhearing this man talking about starting a church, which was for me, like, why would you start a church when there's so many out here? And then, you know, to think about how I even came into the picture and then to think about all of the persons who loved this church enough to make it what it has become. Uh, I don't even like saying the whole I thing because this ain't no Freddie Haynes thing. This is a God thing through a lot of people who made Friendship West what Friendship West has become, who bought into vision, who, who felt a sense of ministry and mission. Um, I'll give it to you like this. Uh, and I say it not just because he's presiding over this AV wise, but uh, Chris Norman uh, is on staff here but his dad introduced him to Friendship West. Friendship West ain't Friendship West without his late father because his father was strong in the music ministry, especially birthing the James C. Holmes male chorus. And uh, I think about, you know, the brother Normans of the church who gave their life to the church, but while they were doing it, they brought their children. And then Chris gets stuck here and then Chris is on staff here. That is Friendship West. You know, uh, dad, active, dad, member, tells his son, you need to come check out this church. His son likes what he sees and becomes a part of the ministry. And that gets reproduced quite a bit. I don't even know if you came here without mama. You know, so it's like mama gets here uh, in terms of Dr. McGee doing what Dr. McGee is doing, mama, tremendous educator, you know, uh, and brings her educational expertise to Friendship West and the movement of Friendship West in terms of Christian education. And then next thing I know, here comes her daughter. And, and her daughter, you know, not only becomes a part of the ministry, the music ministry and the like, but then goes off not only get your education, but then you get to Texas College, blow up at Texas College. I'm tripping on how great you're doing at Texas College. And at the same time, I'm like, because you all sang a rendition of Lift Every Voice and Sing down at the um, uh, Black Academy of Arts and Letters that had me just wiped out. I've, I've never, ever heard it done better. And all I could say was, that is Michelle McGee who goes to Friendship West claiming you. I'm saying, she need to have Friendship West, you know, uh, but I ain't trying to take away from HBCU. And then we have a conversation and you are actually open to making a move when we have a need. And I'm like, okay, I hate to take away from HBCU, but we're gonna do this thing. And that's Friendship West. That is Friendship West. And so, so I look at the fact that you literally, you're a Friendship West baby with what? A baby and your Friendship West baby who has all kind of kids who claim you because of what happened at Texas College, including Saul. You know, that's your child, you know. And, uh, and then I, I travel the country and I meet people who say that you are their mother. And I'm saying, she ain't that old. 
you know, and so uh, <laughs> you to have these old kids, you know, who claim you as mama. So, uh, but that's Friendship West. And so there are personal stories that make Friendship West, Friendship West. And so as much as I think about, okay, the big things we've done, it's those personal stories. People ask me, what do you see as your greatest accomplishment? No, it's not, it's not about my greatest accomplishment. It's about the personal stories. It's the lives who have grown up here, who have been touched here, who have gone off to other places and are making a difference there. All of that is Friendship West. The future of Friendship West is so exciting. And I wanna say, because of the pandemic, because I think the pandemic slowed us down and gave us an opportunity to reset. It gave us an opportunity to regroup, to, to, to be refreshed. And, and it's exciting to me when I look out on Sundays and I see so many new faces who have basically said, this is the home of Friendship West. But then I travel and there are people who are saying, I'm tuning in every single Sunday. I'm, I'm with Friendship West. And then I have people on WhatsApp, you know, in South Africa, in Ghana, in uh, Egypt, in uh, some parts of Europe. And they say, we're Friendship West. And so what excites me about the future is the fact that we still have a good number of members who have been with us, you know, through the years. They go back to Keist, even Polk Street, uh, and before, and they are still with us. And then we are still being blessed with growth. Uh, and the growth, ironically, is young. And so it lets me know there's a rich future uh, in store for us, which will include uh, not only understanding, to use a Stacy Floyd Thomas term, the high bridge approach where we are ministering to those in the house, to those who are here, but those who claim us beyond here. And that is the big challenge. All of my colleagues are talking about now, okay, how do we disciple and minister to and through those who are in other parts of the country, other parts of the world? That is a part of the vision we're trying to formulate or reformulate in this reset. Uh, but at the same time, we're gonna do big things right here on these 60 acres that God is blessing, has blessed us with. And so the whole redoing of a facility that if we're honest, we came into this facility as there was about to be a technological explosion in terms of what churches look like uh, on the inside. And so we're going to uh, redo, renovate, this facility to reflect the new era we find ourselves in. And at the same time, we have a children's church we're proud of, a youth ministry we're proud of. They need their own facility uh, that is multi-purpose. And so the whole inspotainment vision is coming back but it's coming back in a fresh way that reflects the age in which we live. And so I'm excited about the Inspotainment District. So kids will get here on Sunday and then also have a place throughout the week. And here we are in a state where they're banning books. Well, this would be the place to come to read those banned books uh, during the course of the week. And so to have a freedom type school where kids can come after uh, school on uh, during the week on Saturday and study, I'm hyped about that. I'm hyped about the fact that someone shared with me that he said, Frederick Haynes, Manuel Scott was your mentor. You've had great mentors. Why don't we have a listening room somewhere in this country? I think Friendship West is the place where people can come and hear the great preachers who have influenced Frederick Haynes as well as the rest of us in this country. So we talked about a museum, an African, African-American church museum that tells that story. We got to tell that story. That vision is alive and well. And I could go on and on, but the fact of the matter is we're not here by accident. None of what we have shared by way of our history is an accident. God's been setting stuff up the whole time to meet the needs of the community, to meet the needs of our people, to meet the needs of black faith. And I don't think nobody does it better than Friendship West. And so in light of that, the future looks really, really bright. Uh, 
I feel like God has positioned me to set the stage for a greater future. Uh, uh, what did Martin King say? I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. So that's the good news. The good news is that the future is bright. And if I had my shades on, it would reflect how bright this thing is. And so Friendship West is, is, is a gift to the body of Christ. Friendship West is a gift to black faith. Uh, I'm in a PhD program, so I'll close with this, in African-American preaching and sacred rhetoric. So I've literally studied the history of black faith in this country and on the continent. And I've seen how God has literally moved our people through faith to get where we are right now. That story has to be told. And at the same time as that story is being told, that story is continuing to be written. And so, Friendship West is that unique church that is a part of that written history, but Friendship West is also writing a new history. And so new chapters are about to unfold uh, because that's just what God has done. And so I, it just, like I'm tearing up right now thinking about, you know, how I got here, how y'all got here, how all got here with the story that is still being written. And that's what I'm excited about. The best is yet to come. Friendship West, your banner is high. Friendship West, justice, justice, justice. Because without God, we are nothing. I love Friendship West because although I have grown here, Friendship West has always made me feel like family. So with all of that being said, happy anniversary, Friendship West. Happy anniversary, Friendship West. Uh, I love Friendship West because it's a life-changing, game-changing Christian movement, uh, and I really do appreciate the work that we do here as a ministry. I love Friendship West because I get to be who I am and love who I am. Happy anniversary, Friendship West. We're, we're a thriving community, that's why. We're a thriving, we thrive. I love Friendship West because I get to be with my friends and family. I love Happy anniversary. I love Friendship West because I have my friends and family and the people who love in the church. Happy anniversary, Friendship West. I love Friendship West because I believe in God and Jesus for the Lord. And I'm glad that I have my mom and my dad and my whole family. So, happy anniversary. I also like Friendship West because I have a place to worship God. Happy anniversary. I love French West. I love French West because we blackity black 365. I love my church because we are the chosen people. Does that make sense? Now what do you want? <laughs> oh, this for French Oh my 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 Oh my bad. Hey y'all. Hey, the reason I love Friendship West because of y'all people's man. Y'all, I'm in love with y'all, man. It's just there's something about Friendship West, man. The love of Friendship West. Did I say Friendship West like nine nine times? Oh yeah, I did. I love y'all peoples. Thank y'all. Y'all may help us do what we do. And we excited for doing what we do. Peace. I love my church because it makes us thrive for greater opportunities. Happy anniversary. Hi, I like Friendship West because it's amazing. I love Friendship West because it's a place where God is exalted and black people are reassured that we're part of that exaltation. So I just love Friendship West because we do a lot for a lot of different people. Happy anniversary. He just Happy took anniversary. the words right out of my mouth. I, I was going to say all of that, but he, you know, that, that's a that's I a, love Friendship West because they let people like him in. <laughs> So he can't get in every church. Hey, that's how God works. I came here to bless you. What I say? Love you. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy 47th anniversary. Happy 47th anniversary. Friendship West Baptist Church. Happy 47th anniversary. Friendship West. And may God continue to bless. Happy 47th anniversary. Friendship West. Happy 47th anniversary, Friendship West. Happy 47th anniversary, Friendship West Baptist Church. Happy 47th anniversary. That's what I was told to say by Chris, but you know I can't just do it like that. Do you know what today is? It's your anniversary. <laughs> <laughs>